Steve Hanley from Clean Technica. I've got a lot of respect for Steve, and he's published an interesting article. Um, I strongly disagree with some of the claims in the article, but it is fascinating to hear what he has to say because he has a lot of knowledge about what's happening in China. Now, guys, Steve says that BYD's flash charging changes everything. Flash charging, what even is this? 1,000 kilowatt charging. BYD say it's going to roll out 1,000 kilowatt fast chargers across Europe, South Africa, many places around the world. And therefore, this changes everything. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Steve says this, and it's good that he discloses this, this information because I initially thought, I wonder if BYD paid, this was a sponsored article. BYD does spend more money on marketing, I believe currently than any other company in the automotive industry. I would say by a pretty wide margin right now. If you look at their investments, I mean, they're astronomical. I don't know of anyone else that is doing the kind of marketing that they are. It's working though. Steve says, let's get one thing right out of the way up front. I own shares in BYD. Why? Because unlike Tesla, BYD has an actual business plan that involves manufacturing vehicles powered by electricity. Tesla seems content to keep flogging the same horse, the Model Y, forever. I don't think that's a very good uh, explanation for why Steve has shares in BYD. Just by saying Tesla is flogging the horse and doesn't have a business plan for selling EVs, that's his reason for buying BYD stock. Well, okay, my reason for having Apple stock is because Samsung, I don't like their phones. They're crap. So I bought Apple. Doesn't make sense. Steve, come on, mate. Need a better explanation to that than that, than why you own BYD stock. Now, I had no criticisms on you whatsoever for buying BYD stock. I don't think you need to justify it. The trajectory of BYD stock price has been up and down of late, largely due to political turmoil between the US and China. I don't think that's true. I don't think political turmoil between the US and China has anything whatsoever to do with BYD stock price lately, it being up and down. BYD stock price being up and down, its volatility is about BYD, the company, nothing to do with China-US relations. It's about their sales going down. It's about their fights with other companies in China. It's about um, the Chinese government saying, stop, stop doing what you're doing. Stop massive discounting. To BYD, they said it to them. Yeah, these are some of the issues that BYD are facing. It's about disruption coming from sodium ion batteries from rivals. It's about rivals having better plug-in hybrids, better revs. It's they do, which is why BYD's plug-in hybrid sales have gone down. Now, all that said, BYD, like I said, I totally understand Steve investing in them because they're still a very good company. Some of the things that they've been doing, hmm, maybe not as good as what they could have been, but I still think Steve is right when he makes a very big prediction later on. He says in his estimation, BYD would be the largest automaker in the world by 2030. And I've been saying this now for four years. I agree. That being said, anyone who follows my advice says, Steve is a certified fool as my track record as an investor is dismal. Consider yourself warned. <laughs> I like that. It's well said. And, uh, me too. Guys, my track record hasn't been awesome. I sold Neo stock, to be honest, yeah, that was a bad buy. And I sold Xpeng right before it went up again and before the company really transformed themselves. BYD is in the news a lot lately as it opens new markets and introduces new models on what seems like an hourly basis. Yeah, I think I counted guys as 62 models. Uh, yeah, it's very, even ChatGPT and Gemini and Grok struggle to actually count the number of BYD models that there are. I went through this, it was a backwards and forwards process. Earlier this year, they unveiled their Super E platform for EVs. So why is it super? Well, it has a 1000 volt architecture and um, actually it's one change to it is it has a new BYD blade battery and it's a short blade battery. So it's a different battery to the current blade battery. It has a slightly high energy density, but the ability to charge at 1000 kilowatt. But I should mention it's only in two models and those models are not selling. 
the Han LEV, which is the stretch version of the Han, and sales of that vehicle have tanked, and the Tang LEV, which is a stretch version of the Tang, and sales of the Tang haven't been particularly great either. So the market hasn't really responded to this positively. And does that mean the technology isn't great? No, the technology is fantastic. At the heart of this new platform are improved blade batteries, which support ultra-fast charging, says Steve, high-performance electric motors, which can spin, I think, at 27,000 RPM, which is crazy, and a new generation of silicon carbide power chips, BLD calls them, well, these new batteries, flash charge batteries, because they have a 10C charging rate, the highest of any mass-produced traction battery in the world. Now, these batteries are not really mass-produced yet. I should qualify that. Uh, if you look at the actual numbers of cars that BYD is selling, of the Han L and the Tang L, I'd sold that pretty minor production. If BYD were mass producing them, when they do, it will be massive, BYD. They'll be able to bring their EVs up. Right now, the charging speed, the architecture of BYD's EVs that are for sale, 98% of them, is well below rivals. It is. There's no doubt. It is. The charging speed, the architectures are well below. The efficiency is well below. But when they do reveal these new batteries for their mainstream cars, assuming they do eventually, that will be huge. They'll leapfrog everyone, which is, you know, that's how it works, right? Which is great for them if it happens. But I should mention he's kind of wrong about this mass production stuff because the truth is that the fastest charging EV batteries, there's actually two other brands that have faster charging batteries. Uh, for example, the Zika 001 can charge at 1,200 kilowatt. That's significantly faster. So yeah, they're right up there with the fastest, but they're not actually the fastest. The Super E platform apparently will give the ability to add 400 kilometers of range, 249 miles in five minutes. Now that's CLTC range. So probably 300 kilometers and about, you know, 180 miles in five minutes. That's still massive, yeah? Now, Steve says this, fast charging technology is the key to increasing EV adoption as it is seen to help assure EV drivers' concerns over being able to charge their cars quickly. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think fast charging technology is what's going to basically be the, the game changer for EV adoption? I know personally, I think it's more about, more about price and range. I think those two things are more important than fast charging at 1,000 kilowatts. In order to completely solve our users' charging anxiety, we have been pursuing a goal to make the charging time of electric vehicles as short as the refueling time of petrol vehicles, said the CEO of BYD. Megawatt charging is talked about for trucks, for Tesla semis and other electric vehicles, um, because for those vehicles, they kind of need it. They have massive batteries, and so they need you know 1.3 megawatt charging. This is becoming a thing in, Germ in well, actually in Europe as well. That said, in the trucking industry, a lot of people are just doing a battery swap. And the battery swap is much quicker than charging, even using megawatt charging. This month, apparently BYD said they will install their flash chargers in Europe and South Africa. So they're going to install 1,000 kilowatt chargers in Europe and South Africa. In China, those chargers use two charging cables. So you've got to plug in two cables at once. You can't just plug in one, one cable to charge at 1,000 kilowatt. Electrif says this, a report in Spanish by Test Koshers claims at IAA Mobility 2025, a company representative confirmed that in Europe, only one cable is required to charge your EV at 1,000 kilowatt um, DC charging power. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing, if that's true. In her official speech at the IAA Mobility show, BYD Europe CEO Stella Lee, who's also the VP of BYD and basically BYD's spokesperson worldwide, confirmed only that BYD's flash charging will arrive in Europe and that 200 to 300 stations are planned by the end of the second quarter of 2026. So they're saying that within, what, like seven months, eight months, there's going to be 200 to 300 1,000 kilowatt charging stations in Europe. 1,000 kilowatt stations. That's stations, not charging points. That's individual stations. That could be thousands of charging points, assuming each one has a few of them, right? Guys, I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Let us know in the comments. So this far charging technology is not available on any cars available in Europe right now. However, 
Stella is saying that the Denza brand will have this charging ability next year. So these 1000 kilowatt charging EV architectures and charging speeds are gonna to come to Denza branded vehicles. What does that mean? Does that mean Denza branded cars in China? No, it does not because China is aware that uh, Westerners uh, think the word Yang Wang is um, slang for uh, penis. And that's been used for that, to be honest, that term for decades in the West. So they're not going to call um, the Yang Wang vehicles uh, Yang Wangs. They're going to call them Denzers. So basically, you know, all premium BYD cars in the West will be called Denza, no other brands. They're not going to use the Fang Cheng Bao either. People in the West don't want to call their cars they don't want to say, what a car have you got? I've got a Fang Cheng Bao. I mean, it's just no one wants that. So they're going to call them all Denzers, which I think is, makes sense. It's logical. Electric says this, more and more manufacturers are presenting CCS charging cap capacities that go beyond the standard 400 kilowatt fast chargers currently in use to meet the increasing demands of vehicles, charging station manufacturers, and their suppliers are stepping up. LPtronic, for example, enables up to 600 kilowatt per CCS connector from Phoenix contract uh, Phoenix Contact has also charged ca capacity of up to 1,000 kilowatt for their chargers. So it won't be just BYD installing these 1,000 kilowatt chargers, according to these analysts. Now, apparently, Siemens have also introduced their own fast charger, which charges much faster than these chargers. It charges at 1.68 megawatt, which is 1,680 kilowatt charging speeds. Yeah, that's incredibly wild. Apparently, um, you need all the right cooling for that because it gener generates enormous amounts of heat. Electriv also says that BYD will actually introduce its flash 1,000 kilowatt chargers to South Africa. And these stations will be installed at its rapidly growing dealer network across the country. The company will triple its dealer network in South Africa by the end of the year, or end of, sorry, next year, um, by expanding beyond major cities to smaller towns. And, and they said this, by the end of next year, said Stella, we will have 200 or 300 flash charging stations in South Africa, not charge points, but stations. So in other words, BYD is saying that within six months, seven months in Europe, they're going to have 200 to 300 charging stations and 200 to 300 charging stations in South Africa, all capable of charging at 1,000 kilowatt. Uh, the flash chargers will have high power demands, says Clean Technica powered by a combination of electricity from the grid and solar energy. Where sufficient grid capacity is available, the charges will be connected directly. However, the solar option will enable BYD to build infrastructure outside major urban centers, said Stella. BYD signed an agreement with South African electricity supplier ESCOM last month. Several hundred flash charges have been deployed in China this year. So several hundred 1,000 kilowatt charges. BYD has entered into several partnerships for further expansion involving more than 15,000 megawatt charging stations in China. So people are saying with their partner partners, they will install 15,000, more than that, 1,000 kilowatt chargers. In Europe, a network of several hundred charging stations will be established in 2026. Um, yeah, so is this all true, guys? These promises from BYD are pretty awesome, and I hope they're true. I really hope they are. I mean, I hope that somehow BYD can find 200 to 300 locations within 12 months in South Africa capable of charging a 1,000 kilowatt. And considering they can't find any of these in Australia, I don't know how they're going to find them in South Africa. But if BYD is saying, well, we'll build out solar farms and batteries um, in order to create these locations ourselves, well, that's even better. I mean, that's fantastic. I don't think BYD will build out, though, 200 to 300 charging stations in South Africa within 12 months. I just don't think that there's gonna be the, the grid can support that. It's South Africa's grid is not particularly awesome, put it that way. So it seems unlikely that that would be logistically possible. I think BYD have actually done their research on South Africa's grid. I think I've probably done more on research on it than they have because re realistically finding 200 to 300 locations that can charge at a minimum of a thousand kilowatt, that's just for one charger. It's quite expensive to build one charger and not to build out multiple charging points. So I'm kind of being generous here because really you'd think BYD would want to build a at a charging station, have a minimum of two charging points per station. But I'm just going to say they're going to have one charging um, plug per station 
So that means they just need 200 to 300 locations where they can find a thousand kilowatt electricity to send through that cable. Now, I don't doubt BYD could build out these stations, but I don't think there'd be many locations in South Africa based on, <laughs> based on my research that can support a thousand kilowatt charging. And there's not, in fact, that's a big, the biggest challenge for these stations is just finding the right place. You basically need to be near an energy plant, uh, like uh, possibly a big solar farm or you know, right, right next to some sort of integrated connections to be able to get this kind of power. Just putting them at a BLD dealership is not gonna be feasible because it would be a very unlikely that that location can support that kind of charging speed. So remember, when Tesla build their charging stations, they don't often just do it because, hey, this spot looks good. Oh, look, there's some good real estate there. Look, there's a McDonald's across the road. Let's just build it here. They've got to go and do due diligence on the site, find out how much power the grid can support to that site. There's a lot that goes on. It's not just, oh, let's just do it there. Now, now I've got to say, guys, I still hope this happens. And in South Africa, I hope that it does, but I don't think it will. Europe is a different question because Europe is, well, much more modernized grid and you've got massive population in comparison to South Africa. So could you build 200 to 300 different stations in Europe? Absolutely. This still would be hard though. It's still going to be challenging for them to find 200 to 300 locations that will accept BYD going in and putting in their charges. You've got to get all the requirements and regulations. There's a lot of regulations in Europe. BYD can't just go, ah, guys, we've, we've decided to build a, a thousand kilowatt charging station here because it's got plenty of power. So how much do you want? It doesn't really work that way in Europe. There's a lot of paperwork and regulations. You've got to go through all that stuff. How does this going to affect the local community? Blah, 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 all this stuff. So I love BYD's optimism, optimism here. They're kind of like me. This is the way I think. I'm like, I can do it. I can do this. And then I actually try and do something. I go, ah, oh, this is a bit harder than I thought. <laughs> That's what is probably going to happen. And to build them out in six or seven months in Europe, to build up 200 to 300 charging stations, individual stations, uh, within seven months, it's not going to happen. Guys, I'll eat my freaking hat if this happens. But, you know, if it does within two years, that's great. That's awesome. It's awesome. Now, is 1,000 kilowatt fast charging um, some sort of game changer for the industry? Well, not really because it's just a small segment of cars at this point in time. But if BYD did, let's say tomorrow, BYD went, you know what, all of our cars from 2027 onwards or 2026 onwards, or whenever we'll have 1,000 kilowatt charge, 1,000 volt architectures. Yeah, would people buy more EVs? I think so. I think it would increase sales quite a bit. But, but, you know, if the entire grid doubled the amount of charges we had with not 1,000 kilowatt charges, but say 250 kilowatt charges or 350 kilowatt charges or even 450 kilowatt charges, if we double the number of charging points on the grid, yeah, forgot about the need for these kind of insane charging speeds of a thousand kilowatt. In my opinion, that would be a much more, much, much bigger thing we could do. We don't even need to do these crazy charging speeds. What we need is just more charges that can charge at decent speeds, good speeds, you know? Um, for example, not to have massive distances between one charging station where you know they're going to work and another charging station where you know they're going to work. And that's sometimes the problem we have in Australia and it's still the problem in many places around the world. So South Africa, South Africa probably doesn't need um, 300 to 400,000 kilowatt charging stations. They probably need like a couple of thousand, 200 kilowatt charging stations. That would be more important. And I think that actually make more sense for BYD's actual business plan. Think about it. If BYD had a network of 1,000 fast chargers in South Africa, It'd be the, the only network. It'd be the only one that is really significant. And everyone would be like, wow, we have BYD's charging network in South Africa. Isn't this great? I can charge my EV at 250 kilowatt and there's charges everywhere. And it might cost them a similar amount of money, but it would actually be way more beneficial for the population than kind of, you know, getting out your Yang Wang and showing off your thousand kilowatt charges. Guys, excuse the joke there, but what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.